Welcome back. Today I wanted to step through a little example of multiple regression interpretation of coefficients and doing some regression diagnostics. There's been a number of questions about this. This example can be downloaded from the web. If you go to amherst.edu tilde n horton rstudio slash more reg dot rmd for the uh, markdown file or the file that I'm looking at right now um, the HTML formatted version. What I want to do here is consider fitting a multiple regression model using the Galton data set. Um, and we want to predict the height of the child as a function of gender, in this case a boy or girl, as well as parental height, in this case just the moms. So we start by fitting what we call the main effects model. Remember this just has mother and the sex indicator in it. We're going to use make fun to create a function so we can plot the predicted values for it and display the coefficients from this model. So again, we expect that a girl with mother zero inches tall to be about 41 inches tall. This is an implausible value. We'd expect um, that holding sex fixed for every additional inch tall that a mother is, the child to be about 0.35 inches taller. And then finally, holding mother height fixed, we'd expect that a boy will be about 5.18 inches taller than a girl. So let's pl plot those predicted values. This is done in three steps. We start by doing x, y plot. We run plot fun and we run plot fun again with those two values changing the boy into the girl. Again, these are coded M and F here. And we see that the predicted values for the males are about five inches taller than that for the females and that there's this uh, linear relationship. We could also test the interaction model, which wonders whether or not there's a different difference, whether the association between mother's height and the child height differs for boys and girls. When we do that, what we see is a coefficient of 0.05 for this interaction. That's pretty small. It's pretty close to zero. Um, while it's true that there's a slightly larger slope for boys and for girls, the difference is fairly modest. We observe that they look almost parallel on these predicted values. You can see a little bit that it's a little tighter on this side than it's here. Again, again, this, sl this slope is about 0.05 units higher for the boys than it is for the girls, but really very similar. In this case, I think that the main effects model does a good job of interpreting um, and, and summarizing these relationships. So I'm going to pick the main effects model, and we always need to be thinking about regression diagnostics, and these are the line assumptions that we've talked about a couple of times. Here, remember, we only have one continuous predictor. So we'll generate a display of the residuals versus fitted values, as well as the display of residuals versus mother's height, that single predictor. I'm using the alpha option to um, control overplotting, and I'm also putting on the smooth line and the regression line. Um, I've uh, cleaned up my axis labels a little bit, and we see here two clumps of observations, but really not much of a difference in the association. There's the relationship between height and residual seems to be pretty much noise at this point. We're not concerned that there's the clumping. We know that the boys and girls will have different heights. We can also look at the residuals versus mother's height by doing a scatter plot here of height versus um, the residuals versus predicted height. And we don't really see much of a pattern here, though there are relatively few observations in this region. So again, this looks pretty reasonable to us. Um, independence is a bigger issue here. If we look at the documentation for Help Galton, we see that the observations are actually clustered within families. We have multiple kids with the same mom. As a result, the assumption the residuals are uncorrelated with each other is less plausible. As is often the case for the independence assumption, we need to actually know something about the study to assess it. Normality actually looks pretty good here. If we look at the distribution of the residuals, um, they do seem to be really pretty normally distributed. That assumption seems reasonable here. And finally, the equal or common variance assumption. We need to assess whether the errors are homoscedastic or if they depend in some ways on the fitted values or the mother's height. That would be heteroscedastic, the opposite of homoscedastic. So here there's little evidence if we go back to those scatter plots that the residuals change as a function of fitted value or mother's height. But we can also generate a scale location plot to do this. We use the mplot function to do this. What we want for the mplot function here is that line that we see to be relatively straight. And we do see some indication that as you go from 62 to 66 inches, there's a slight slope. But overall, it's pretty reasonable. The equal variance assumption seems reasonable to assume here. In summary, we saw that the linearity assumption 
uh, the normality assumption and the equal variance or common equal uh, variance assumptions were reasonable, but here independence is suspect. So we want to be careful in terms of fitting the, uh, interpreting this uh, multiple regression model.